welcome to Mando Bug Crafts episode 70. What's up everybody? My name is Amanda, but you may know me on the web as Mando Bug um, on various social media websites. Alright, starting the show out with something I've learned. This week I learned how to do a bias bind off. So I'll go ahead and share the project with you. Um, we'll just go straight into works in progress since that's what it's about. So I've been working on the Paulina top, which I showed you guys last week. It's this nice open cropped layering top. And I'm knitting it on, let's see, I have some Addy Rocket US size 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter. Uh, and I'm using BC Garn, Tessa Tweed, and TT something, the red-orange color. So this is what I have, right? Which is nothing, but that's because of the way that the piece is constructed. So I finished half of it. So I've kind of got it folded to show you the top. So yeah, that's the front. So you knit it starting, I'll kind of stand up awkwardly. Um, you knit starting at the sleeve, and you knit to the center, and you knit your left half, and then you knit your right half, and then you piece them together. So, and I'm kind of, you know, now that I've put this up against myself, maybe it's not going to be too bad. I was worried that it was going to be more cropped that for, than my liking, but I think I might be able to tug on it a bit, and it might be okay. Um, anyways, the bias bind off. So this is the neckline shaping and you use the bias bind off to give you that nice curve. Uh, this piece has a great neckline, a great, um, this is the back, um, back line? <laughs> is that a thing? The, you know, it's still the neckline, it's just the, on the back, I guess. Uh, but it's really, it's a really cool technique. Now, I followed the tutorial on Cocoa Knits. So this is a Cocoa Knits pattern and on the printed pattern it says, you know, for a tutorial or description of the bias bind off, see our website. So I went there and I have to admit it was a little confusing at first, but that's because it's so simple. I thought that I didn't read the instructions. I was like, is that it? Because they describe it and then they give an example, which the example is different than what my pattern says, and so that was kind of confusing. But you are just slipping the last stitch of your wrong side row so that when you slip, flip to your right side row or whichever row you're actually binding off, um, you'll have that stitch you slipped. You slip that, you slip the next one, and you bind off. That's it. And, and so that way you're not knitting and adding height, you're like easing your edge in and it it's a great result if I can now I've unfolded it and now it looks confusing <laughs> but um, I did already show it to you guys already so the bias bind off uh, if you're knitting uh, a top or sweater this way that may come in handy um, or I guess I'm so used to knitting pieces that don't have seams like you know like a raglan kind of shaping where you don't have to to really worry about that but I don't know I like it so I'm really happy with this piece so far and I'm thinking that it's gonna look really good over like a little black dress I'm excited I have cast on for the second half and I have a feeling I'm probably gonna have this finished by the time I record next week Maybe. I mean, I don't want to promise anything, but it, it's, it's likely. It is a possibility. Um, so I'll just go ahead and continue with the rest of my works in progress. I know it's a little out of order for me, but we'll go for it. I did pick up the poncho design I've been working on. So I'm designing this poncho out of Simply Worsted in this gray and metallic colorway. It's got sparkle in it. And I'm using a 6.5 millimeter or K hook. And last time I showed it to you guys, I was just frustrated with it. So I had added this lace, well, lacy section, right? It matches the rolled neck collar. So I'd added it in, but I was having issues increasing in the corner. 
last time I told you, I, did, I had already ripped it out so I didn't show you, the corner increases were leaving these giant gaps. I mean, like, now I've added stitches in between, but what had, when I had gotten through three rows of the lace repeat, I had a gap from there all the way to there. And it was just too much. I didn't like it, wasn't happy, so I ripped it out, redesigned the corner increases, and I'm happy. I feel like it's giving me a nice sharp corner, it's not holy, and it blends pretty seamlessly in with the pattern. Um, so I did that, and now I'm just doing the last linen stitch rows to give it a border, and I'm on the third row, and I think I'm going to do a fourth row and call it done. So it's almost there. I let Emily try it on today, and, and I like it on her in this triangle shape. When it's on her in the square shape, which you could choose to do either, um, I just don't think it's as cute. Um, I think it would be cuter if, if I had designed it to be a square to make it not so wide and bring it down farther. But I had originally intended for it to be worn more like a blanket shawl kind of piece. Uh, so, uh, she put it on. She did not want to take it off. Wow, the sun is coming out from behind the clouds. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like in my eyes. I always try to record in front of an open window because I find it gives me the best light, but wow. We have like an overcast day today, so that was surprising. <laughs> uh, you guys probably don't even notice a difference. It's just in my eyes. Sorry. Uh, so yeah. She loved it, didn't want to take it off, and I was trying to explain to her it's not done yet. The yarn is still connected, but of course she didn't quite get that. She's just like, why can't I wear it now? What's wrong now? So, um, other than that, I only have one other work in progress, and it's my swag bag. So I was able to pick it up and do a little bit more work on it. So if I was going to make this bag again, I would machine sew these pieces on. So the original pattern, it has you... Um, sew these layering pieces on top of your piece of fabric. They recommend wool. I just went with some cotton I had and my other three pieces are cotton as well. Um, and the pattern just said sew it down. I hand stitched it. I think it would have saved a lot of time to just machine stitch it because it doesn't really matter. Um, especially when you go to put these ribbon these ribbons on, it covers a lot of your seams so it's not like you even see the decorative hand stitching. Not that it was meant to be all that decorative, but um, it just would have saved time to use the machine. So with this uh, woven fabric here, I am going to get, see if I can zoom in, well not zoom in, but bring it in closer. Um, I am going to get some fraying there, but I think my stitches will keep it from completely unfraying, so it kind of gives it more of that handmade look. And so this piece is ready now for its applique pieces which I've cut out and I've started working on. So it has these giant circles and I'm in the process of appliquing those down so you can see my stitches a little bit. I've started sewing the center to the middle and then the middle will have to be sewn to the large and then this will be placed on the bag and there's actually four of these. Three go on the front, one goes on the back and I'm using that Moda wool scrap bag to do this um, with these colors. So I didn't have enough for them all three to be this way. So the one that's going on the back is going to be just same colors, just different order because I didn't have enough of this color to do them all large. So I just need to sew those down. Once those get down, I get to start the decorative stitching. It's got some running stitches, some bullion stitches that I've never done. So I'm excited to try that out. And so I picked up some of Sue Fargo's thread. It's called Eleganza. I got, let's see, if I can tell you the numbers, EZM 12 and EZM 18. So this is 12 and this is 18 and they're a variegated, I don't know if it will go in for you, they're a variegated um, cotton thread, which I think is going to be really fun when it comes time to decorative do decorative stitching. So that's kind of been a fun project on the side, but um, time consuming. It, the results are not as fast as some other crafts. But I've always found hand, stitch, hand stitching to be like that, whether it's embroidery, cross stitch, or just hand sewing in general. 
Um, so yeah, that's all my works in progress. Since we skipped finished objects, I'll go back to that. I only have one finished object. You may have seen it on my Instagram, but I did a quick spin. So I may have failed Tour de Fleece, but that doesn't mean I'm not a spinner. <laughs> I'm still spinning. Um, so this spin was a four ounce braid of fiber that I got from Rock and String Creations. I'll show you the tag. Now the uh, there we go. the colorway I didn't see seem to see one printed on the ball band or roving band. So I'm not sure that there was a colorway. It was mostly white with splashes of hot neon rainbowy colors. So um, I got it like a year ago, I think, with another braid of fiber, which is actually sitting right here. I'll grab it. This one. So the colors are the same, but this one had a lot more white space in it. This one's fully saturated throughout. Um, both 100% Superwash BFL. So, and this one I don't see a colorway on it either. This is what her roving band looks like. But my son was eating this one. My paper eating kids. <laughs> they really just put everything in their mouth. It, that's what it is. Um, so, I don't have that anymore because it got dirty and there were bites taken out of it. So. Anyways, I did just a quick single spin on this because I wanted to gift it to a co-worker who is leaving us, but I realized when I showed up to work that she already had her last day and I missed my chance to give it to her. So I'm hoping I can still gift it to her at some point. I'm sure I'll see her around, um, but I was like, whoops, I thought that she still had another week there. <laughs> my bad. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, I get to keep it. That's not bad. <laughs> but anyways, I did single, I did a, just a quick single, and I will have to say, the dye job, absolutely a dream. I've worked with quite a bit of hand dyed fiber for spinning now, and this is, hands down, one of the best I've worked with. The colors are very deeply saturated, which you can't tell from the way that it was spun because there was so much white space. So the white space blended in with the colors and that's what has made it look a little more like um I always think it looks like when you color with crayons how you know if there's a rough texture there's white spots left behind but that's because of the the way that it was dyed not the technique but the design of the way it was dyed um but the colors that was fully saturated a lot of times when you have fully saturated fiber like that it will be a little felted even just like a tiny bit and it may stain your fingers. Absolutely no felting, absolutely no staining. It was just nice and fluffy and just so easy to draft. I cannot speak more highly of this fiber. It was, it was absolutely amazing to work with. And it's super wash, right? And I did a single, right? I talked about this like a week ago, like, is it gonna fold? Can I felt it so that I can leave it safely as a single and it won't break? I don't really have an answer for that. I did my normal hot cold shock treatment agitation. Um, it it feels pretty sturdy, but I won't really know until I get feedback when they work it up um, or if I end up keeping it and making something with it. It doesn't seem like it's going to come undone. I do think it fold, um, but I mean, and you can kind of see there's like the slightest halo around the fiber. And I think that's from my shocking and agitation to the fiber itself. So, I don't know. I mean, fingers crossed it stays together. I'll have to do, maybe I'll do singles for this one that's super wash and keep it and knit it and report back. I mean, I tried to, like, search the internet for an answer. Can you full super wash roving? But I didn't really find an answer. I found a mill that was selling like, you know, for those giant hand arm knit blankets. Um, they said they could fold their superwash roving um, so that it was sturdy and wouldn't felt when it's a giant hand knitted or arm knitted blanket, but that was really the only... and it didn't seem like a credible source. So, I don't know. Maybe you guys know. You can let me know. Maybe you've done it or maybe you have know where to find that information or have it somewhere. Um, so yeah, 
Moving on to check it out. So this week I met Jen, who is a pattern designer. Sorry, I like to sit with my feet crossed and I didn't mean to kick the table. Um, she's a pattern designer and she runs a group on Facebook. It's a closed group, so you have to request an invite, but really the only requirements is that you're a yarn lover and you follow the rules of the group, which are basically like don't come in and harass people and post all these political posts and try to just advertise your stuff. It's more for like, you know, a knitting community, a group of friends, share projects, share inspirations. So I joined that group this week and it's been a lot of fun to watch uh, just the community and the feed and see everybody's, you know, there's designers and there's yarn dyers and just knitters and crocheters and spinners and a lot of people sharing tips and tricks and so I've really been enjoying being a part of that group and it was really fun to meet Jen. So, um, yeah, it's called Yarnitude and I'll link to it on in the show notes which you can find a link to that in the description box of this video. So, that's all I wanted to say about that. Moving on to Let's Chat. So I've still been continuing to brew my kombucha. I finally got it down to the right portions. So my issue was really that I wasn't pulling enough out and I was leaving too much starter tea and then I was putting too much new tea and water into my new batch, not leaving enough for all of the starter tea that I had left, not leaving enough room for the SCOBY to breathe. I mean, just I was doing everything wrong. Nothing to ruin the batch, but enough to make it not optimal. So this last batch I bottled, um, so just to give you an idea, the very first batch I did, I got seven bottles. This one I got ten. Same amount of tea in the jar. So I had three bottles worth of kombucha left over from my first batch that didn't fit into my new brew that I was doing. So I was just keeping way too much tea and not allowing enough room for it to flow over. So this time with my 10 bottles that I pulled out, it left exactly two cups of starter tea, which I think is a little more than necessary, but it, I think it's okay. And I left, made sure to leave enough room to get all those two cups back into my new brew and left enough room for the SCOBY to breathe and not be up in the neck of the bottle. So I'm kind of excited to see how this next batch tastes. The batch I have currently is stronger than the last, but not quite bold in flavor, not the boldness I'm looking for. Um, I had some pineapple and then a ton of fresh raspberries from the side of our house. So I did some raspberry, some pineapple, and then some raspberry pineapple mix. I tried the raspberry pineapple mix today and it was pretty good. It was kind of tart from the raspberries, so I'm kind of curious to see just how tart the pure raspberry um, flavor is. So I've been enjoying that and what's what else? Oh! So I'm going to be going to Vegas next week. So there won't be a podcast episode next week because I usually, today's Thursday and then I get the video up by Friday morning. Um, so next week, Thursday night, we're going to be driving down to visit family in California and we'll do a short trip to Vegas, just me and my husband while family watches the kids. Um, again, I talked about my brother turning 21. And so he's going with his friends and we have cousins we've never met down there. So it's kind of like a family get to meet each other, celebrate John's birthday with his friend. And so we're we're really excited to do that. I've never been to Vegas before. My husband's been a couple times, but he's never been um, since he turned 21. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun, even though it's only going to be two days. Uh, when I was talking to my cousins about shenanigans, uh, I told them, I said, I'm down for whatever as long as you take me to at least one yarn store. There has to be a yarn store down there and I would like to go. <laughs> so <laughs> um, they were like, uh, sure, whatever. <laughs> so um, hopefully I'll get to have some fun checking out a local yarn store because I always love to check out what the different areas have to offer. Each local yarn store I've ever been to is so different from another that it's nice to kind of see what's out there. Um, so yeah, I, t I don't really have much else to say, which is unfortunate because the kids are sleeping. I was heating up some soup for lunch and then they fell asleep and I was like, oh, I better go podcast while they're asleep because I wasn't sure I was going to get to record today. <laughs> so um, yeah. That is all I have for you guys this week. So until not next week, 
but the next week, happy crafting. Bye.